Hello there, everyone, and welcome back, of course, to TNO, The Last News of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. McCulliver, and right now, we are currently doing the focus search for recognition. Now that we have established a foothold in Central Siberia, the next most important step for revolution besides internal stabilization is to appeal for recognition among the various nations of the world. While we would certainly benefit from friends in the U.S. and perhaps even Japan, smaller nations around the world recognizing our regime would give us amazing rewards. A Soviet diplomatic corps will be established, and they will soon be sent across the globe to gain favor and support for our nation. Our corps will consist of some of the finest and most charismatic men. Men! who will win over the hearts and minds of influential allies from the streets of Washington to the venues of Rome. While this is in motion, a large part of our government will get ready to ensure safe travel out of the country for our diplomats and get ready for the influx of foreign interests in our government. Although investment and risk is massive, the payoff will be very, very well see us as a preeminent power in Russia. And which, we are almost done with this part of the focus tree, and then we're going to go to war, and we'll have a good time, but let's do the solidarity to the socialist cause. We are, as always, have been champions of the socialist cause, and the ultimate global victory of communism remains our eventual goal. With the world the way it is, however, there's no room for delay in supporting communism in other countries, or else the fire revolution might be stamped out by the fascists. Dogarinos. The first step we can take towards preventing this is to establish relations with other existing communist states, supporting them both directly and indirectly to ensure their continued existence. Only when the survival of communism is assured can the flame spread. And bet better consumer goods, which will apply or to join the preeminent international socialist organization, the SOC Interim, which actually I think the these guys already formed, but I'm kind of joined them off screen, but whatever. Central Asian countries. Central Asia has a certain closeness to Russia and its rulers going back hundreds of years. While the region formally separated and became multiple many independent states with the collapse of the Union, many informal ties remain, especially when it comes to trade. Siberia and Central Asia are still heavily linked economically, but suffer from a lack of formal governmental support for these links. As such, it would be foolish, or it would be actually really good, or both to our benefit, and theirs to establish formal trade agreements between our states to ease access and reduce the cost of trading. Good, so people will like us a little bit more. And we have a little bit more manpower, but not really, no. And which we want to get more of this stuff as well. Other than that, we still have the whole unification stuff. It is almost 1969, so then we can start... Oh no, can we do Siberian reunification? No, we can't do that. We need to, maybe... We might be able to do this one. We might be actually be able to peacefully reunify with these guys. So we'll see what happens. That actually sounds really good for us. Really, really good. And we're building up some more civvies as well, which is muy bueno, as some might say. Probably not too much in Russia, but that's okay. Cool. And there we go. Followed up with taking back our place. With our diplomatic situation. Oh, look at that. If you're wondering about that, please go right ahead. Our diplomatic situation secured. It is nigh time to set our eyes on the rest of Russia. Regardless, if <clears throat> they are misguided, fragile democracies, imposters, Soviet states, or traitors, fascist aligned dogs, they must all fall for the good of the nation. We've seen them prepare much like we have. With spirits of foreign delegations, mo movement of men along our borders, and cries for reunification, they will not be ready, though. Several years ago, when Premier Vasilevsky united the Red Army to secure Central Siberia, he dreamed of fighting the, righting the wrongs of Bukharin's failed union. That dream is marching closer to reality, reality currently. Final plans are being drafted up for our armies, and our people are being coerced by speeches and rallies in the factories of our country, hum ready for war. When the fate of the Union is decided, it will ultimately sway in our favor. The Red Army will be known from the West to the East as a great unifier of Mother Russia, the slayer of the Nazi menace, the liberator of the people, and the rebirth of the strongest nation to exist on this earth, the bear's back, and he is ready for war. We get 10% more stability, which is great, because we still have minus 100%. Ah, lovely, isn't it? Absolutely lovely. We could do, maybe do this one to get more weekly stability, but we got other stuff to do first. Academic base. Uh, that was one of the comments. Improve academic base. So, you guys recommended it. Sure, why not? Even though I kind of prefer... Oh, actually, nothing really here. This would give us save, save us slightly more PP. Uh, PP, actually. That's not too bad. Actually, we'll probably do that one next. It doesn't cost too much, but taking back the place. Oh, got some technology done, too. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. I'm doing okay myself, and I'm ready for war. Well, at least hopefully we're ready for war. Uh, go and do. We're gonna spend more money now because they're not gonna cost us that much more, and we get to mobilize a few thousand more soldiers, which ultimately would be really good for us to keep, you know, training a bigger and bigger army. So that'll be good. And how are our choppers? My main goal is to use choppers in this campaign. Wow, that looks really bad. I did convert the horse division over there. So if you like to read about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. And better industrial expertise, please go right ahead as well. And these guys are looking not too bad. Twenty-four to twenty-four, two thousand, two thousand, nine hundred. Well, looking okay. And now we have modern agriculture in our part of Siberia. Great. Experienced industrial base as well. What's not to love? And it's now 1969, everyone. Hope you're having a great, fabulous year. And what's up next? Oh, we can do all this stuff down here. The Socialist International, huh? Propose another aggression back. Well, we don't have the PP for this, so... I don't really care to do that right now, just because we don't have the PP for it, so... We could take the money from here, because I've done it before, but I don't really feel like it. The Scientific Bureau? Eh, I don't know about that. Let's just close out of this for now. I don't really want to get involved with that stuff, because uh, we want to keep moving on. Keep on trucking. Nice. 
Yeah, join the Comic Con. Oh, and we can pro pose up. Yeah, let's do that one. It's A69, so. And scroll, scroll, scroll. Prepare for work. Begin unification talks. Ah, here we go. Extending the olive branch. If you like to read about, if you like to read about all these, please go right ahead. It's just, it is what it is. Their diplomatic weight is quite bad compared to us. So, mutual training. Let's see, border access. How about border access? This seems something easy, something nice to start off with. And we can save some people by doing this. If we don't have to go to war, that would save us a ton of manpower. But if we do go to war, we'll get a lot of army XP and maybe some air XP that we don't really need, but that's still okay. One, two, three, and send some. We'll do some coffee here to keep us nice and warm. And Joko re-elected Prime Minister, not bad. And let's do this one, because we get some more expertise, because we can. Cool, and now we're going to get a lot of PP, or 1.96, almost two a day. That's not bad, uh, because we're not doing a focus anymore, because we're done with our focuses. Because we were the first group here in this campaign to unify, so we've had a lot of extra time to do our focuses, so we've got, we've got some extra time, which is really nice. <clears throat> uh, so, other comments, though. Oh, MC MCS actually won? Wow. Oh, God, how bad is America right now? The naivety of Johnson. Oh, boy. High unity. The American Malays. Uh, I guess technically, yeah, these guys did explode in Africa. Last Bastion Freedom. Uh, if you like to hear about that, please go right ahead. Um, effective civil rights legislation. Okay, that's not too bad. They actually have passed civil rights. Uh, paralyzing domestic discontent. No wonder LBJ lost. And anything else? No, no, no. Reception. Okay, we propose the same thing to each other. All right. Vote in favor. Yes. Yes. Oh, I don't really care. Let's go with that one. 20. Nice. Receptiveness is 20, which is very, very good. Um, what else are we going to do here? As long as your diplomatic weight doesn't go up by too much. Oh, mutual training? Diplomatic concessions? No, 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 no. Ask for industrial aid? Sure, why not? Let's try that one. And we have some more PP2. Alright, let's come back down here. And poverty relief. Alright, there we go. Nice. Finally, we can finally use our PP for good. Oh, some coffee or two. Uh, like I said, comments. So I recommend I play as Goring. Um, at the time of this recording, there's a sub mod for Goring, like Go Mr. Goring's Wild Ride. It's not updated for TNL, which I hope it does get updated, because I do want to do Goring. I just don't want to play as him and then end the world in nuclear heck fire. Because that would be really disappointing, because I would like to disable nukes and take over America, and take over Japan, playing as Goring, because that sounds like a lot of fun. I just hope that that sub mod eventually gets updated so we can do that. Using that sub modder. I don't think you can, can you disable nukes in the game rules? I can't remember. Because I, I at least, you know, if we're going to do it, I want us, um, I want us to do and be successful at whatever we do on the channel as best as we can. Obviously, I'm not successful at everything here, but uh, I want to be as successful as possible. So, we'll see. I definitely want to do Goring. I want to do Goring Spare. I've done Hadris two times, so I'll probably do him again sometime. <laughs> um, yeah, just. Declaration of Friendship. Uh, we're 45. Let's do it one more. Mutual training. Why not? Um, so, yeah. And who's the other one? Speer. I've not done Speer. Goring. Yeah. Bo I've done Bor Borman. Borman is... He's okay. He's supposedly the canon leader, but I don't, I don't know if there's canon anymore for TNO, but... Yeah. I'm interested in seeing... Playing Goring someday, so... I'll put it like that. And I, and as some of you guys said in the last video, or last the comments were in the last video, I uh, should should have kept Democratic Army. That would have made, made a lot more sense last time. We lost 25% more political power. We got 10% more organization, so... Really, I should have kept it because we're doing the civilian route, but it is what it is, you know. I should have realized that, but I was just like, ah, it doesn't really matter to me too much. Cool. Nap? Yes! We all signed the nap. 60 and 0. Oh, we're probably going to be able to peacefully reunify. That's nice. That's actually really good. What are we missing besides manpower? Just manpower. Okay, not bad, not bad. Better artillery? Very good. Love it. Who doesn't love artillery? Scientific research? Why not? Land reforms? Eh, we can do that eventually, but let's go and do Declaration of Friendship. Why not? Join exercise is great. More army XP. Ah, oh, we love Mr. Yagoda over there. You go to the unmatch, unstoppable match of progress. Absolutely. We spent more money. We went down to four billion. Okay, not bad. Pretty good. Pretty good. I like having a lot of PP here. Uh, can we train any of our guys still? Yes, we can. Uh, that's good. All right, let's keep getting some better planes then. Better jet fighters will be very good to get. Not bad. Not bad. And once we, if we do peacefully reunify, then we just get to integrate these guys. So that we have a massive army, a lot of debt, but that's okay. All right, I thought these guys were fighting each other before. Were they not? Oh, maybe not. Far Eastern Soviet Socialist Republics propose... Oh, uh, we can't beat them. Uh, sure. Why not? Oh, look at that. That's nice. Actually, their weight is 11. Ours is 43, which is good, so... Um, you know what? Let's choose this one. I almost never choose it. Even though we don't actually need societal development anymore. Ooh, you know, let's do the other ones first. I think that's better to do. Hire foreign instructors. Um, construction speed, that's really good to do. Agriculture is okay. All we're left is agriculture. Can we actually get rid of the debuffs here? 
because I don't mind doing like getting slightly decreased coring times. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. Eh, it does still matter a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, let's do this one. I want to see if we can actually get out of the hole we've dug ourselves in. We have high taxes, flat taxes, one-year draft, state atheism, no voting, no healthcare, elite education only, tons of poverty. Great. Even more PP. Screw. Let's do this one just to decrease coring times. All right. Hundred and negative fifteen. Look at that. That's pretty good. That is really, really good, actually. Wow. Oh, and these guys are going to kill each other. I kind of hope Omsk wins, because I do want to fight. I do want to have a good old fight between these two. So, I do want to fight Omsk, but we'll see what happens. Tukacheski is kind of weird. People don't like Tukacheski too much. Oh, he's, oh Omsk is probably going to lose. That yeah, manpower. The industry is pretty similar, but manpower-wise, yeah, I think the WRF is going to win. But, I've been wrong before, so we'll see. Conference Unification? Great! We must rally the Russians. Um, I don't know we rally the Russians. It doesn't matter too much, I suppose. What's the next tech done, actually? Oh, about a week. Better engineers just in case. Anything else here? How's the solid development going? Uh, basic literacy is slowly going up. It might get done there. Research facilities, we'll probably get that one done. Agriculture is already great. Over here, we'll get poverty better as well, which gives a load more money. Just a load of more money. Let's get more of this too, and line out attack and stuff like that. Line vacation talks, please. And agriculture. Oh, incentivizing your allies. Oh, let's do it. Discreetly support pro unification groups. If it doesn't go well, then whatever. There goes Yemen. Instability in the Middle East. That never would happen. Yeah, I don't want to get any more. I don't want to use manpower, but stability. It doesn't look like it's going up at all, actually, so. Yeah, not good. Not bueno. I don't want to keep investing things that won't work well for us, so. Let me do some coffee or two. Hey, less than four billion. Not bad. Join exercises? Uh, sure. Yep, they're killing each other, which is nice. About less than one month. And how are they doing over here? Oh, they're doing okay down here. We'll see what happens, though. These guys are probably out of manpower by now, though. Yep. And they're just rallying even more, man. Jesus. Wow. I'll do it once. Why not? Come on. About less than three weeks. Not bad. Not bad. How are we building up? Oh. We're not building as much as I would like for us to. There you go. We're still building. Still building. About a week left. Not bad. Oh. Import heavy industry, yes. More equipment, please. Thank you. Um, yeah, poverty's gonna get better very, very soon. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, army professionalism. We probably will get up to professional army. We'll see what happens. If you like to about a decrease in poverty, please guard ahead. I toast for economists. Nice. More base bleed. Great. Let's go back over here. Uh, yeah, I'll go on first. So much more soft attack. After so long, yeah, many more fester. Look at that. We got him. We straight up just got him. Beautiful. 25 divisions. Don't even care what they are. Swip, switch over to that. There we go. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, my friends. Um, Yeah, pretty good. I'd say that's a pretty darn decent. We got a, a few more millies. Not too many more, but a few more. Oh, we're going to need way more of this. Oh, crap. Maybe that was a mistake I did. That's alright. Hey, I got the airbase. Hydroelectric station. Magadan. Love it. But now... Oh, crap. We have to integrate these guys. We can close out of that stuff for now. Oh, crud. I forgot about this. Chukoka. Why not? Well, I guess it's time for Siberian reunification. Even plus 20 more percent. More, ah, actually, so now we're actually only minus 81%. That's much better than before. Good extra influence. Increase investment. Yes, please. And we can do our focuses. Uh, if you want... Read about this please go ahead. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh let's see, increase investment, that's fine. Investment, Kazakhstan, yeah, there's only one thing here. Increase more investment. Because we I want to peacefully reunify with these guys, so we'll see what happens. And there you go. So if you want to read about these, all these, please go right ahead. This this is a generic kind of Russian warlord nuclear program. So if you want to read about these, please go right ahead. I don't like I've read these quite a few times already, so I'll give you the option to read them if you like. Cool.
Military budget. Oh, look at that manpower. Nice, 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 nice. That's point. Uh, cut down by one. There you go. I don't want to deal with all these divisions, so I don't like seeing all this, these guys. You go to build a lot of dudes. Oh, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. It's just equipment from America, so. Thank you. We love the CIA here. Every little bit helps. We saved so many lives by not going to war with the Far East. You go to knew what was good for them. We could do military intervention, but... Oh, we still might have to kill them later on anyway, so we'll see what happens. Alright, and we'll do this one to help... Uh, this stuff over here, too? Nice. Cool. And I'm going to go ahead and start reading about a United Siberia. Now that we've united Siberia and control the Far East, we must begin preparations for the next step up, the unification of Russia. We've come far, but our greatest challenge yet lies ahead. Our industry must be expanded, our army size increased, and our military fully modernized and reformed. We must be superior to our contender in every way, as we have no option to fail now. Nice. Even better planes. The bestest planes. Actually, no, we're actually looking really good after we converted these things. Okay, yeah, we're actually looking really good now. Uh, I don't want, I don't care about that stuff. And I never use interceptors. Transport, oh, wait, what? Oh, transport helicopters. Those are transport helicopters. And I don't even use that garbage. There you go. If that's a case, make two of these. Screw this one. Who cares about infantry? I want this type of infantry. Much cooler types of infantry, man. We don't need to spend any more money on the military anyways. So, there you go. Cool. Pavel, anything for us? No? Okay. But keep, oh, uh, we still have to core more stuff, so. Decrease relations? Sure, why not? They're receptive, which is very good for us. And we'll go with the United Siberia next. And the Baratia. Followed up with Open New Doors, Soviet Navy. Let's do this one. Securing the Far East because we could use that right now. The Far East is incredibly diverse, culturally and ideologically. To be united, our new lands must be integrated into our administration, using local governors on the left over communist officials. Locals become accustomed to our new rule and to the Red Army. Our resistance will be met with the utmost force, which we love force here. Force of arms? Force of nature? Isn't that a League of Legends item? Foon. Yeah, it's Foon. Force of nature, I'm pretty sure. But that's okay. Cool. Up next. Uh, we probably won't do that one to rebuild the city. Ooh, we get more millies. A lot more millies. Ooh, but poverty gets better. Uh, we won't have enough time to fix it, but much of the Far East was left devastated by the wars that occurred throughout the region, such as the Siberian War or the petty conflicts between warlords shortly after, leaving the city's damage and to a certain extent depopulated. Thus, in turn, critically weakened the economy of the region and, and left far too many in poverty, which is now our problem to solve. To undo some of the damage, we will repair the cities and encourage people to move back into them, while also investing in the region to create, if not prosperity, then at least the normality there once was before all of the fighting. Nice. We're still using really outdated guns here. Oh my goodness. Keep building, keep building, 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 building. And we're going to do Irkutsk next. Boom. Yes. Can we do this? Oh, how much political power are we not going to Oh, that, no matter. It's taking forever. There you go. Well, actually, it's 6.97, huh? Now it's back up to 8. Okay. That's yeah, alright, whatever. Alright, Thank you. Come again. So, we can do this. Prepare for war. Reunify the motherland. 71. So, we've got quite a while for, before we need to go here, so. And that's okay with us. Oh, we got more PP. Yes, please. That's about 40 days, so that's not too bad. And by their scientists? Yes. Rapidly improve. Despite the relatively low population and high poverty of the region, there were a number of talented young scientists working for the Far Eastern states. Now that we've taken control of the region, their future careers are in limbo, having no ties to our state. This is a mistake that we must immediately correct, for we are not in the sort of position where we can afford to let skilled researchers slip out of our hands. As such, we will invite them to come work for our government and innovate on our behalf, closing the technological gap with the rest of the world and improving our reputation in one action. Awesome. Come over here and keep getting all this stuff done. More land and attack is just incredibly strong. Plus 20%? Oh my goodness! Increase in relations? Yes, please. They're aligned. Because even if we add them to the sphere, it doesn't mean they will uh, actually, you know, ally with us. Are they, are they actually going to win? How are they winning with no manpower? How did you run? They actually run out of manpower. Cool. Invite the scientists. Nice. For two years, we get more tech. Nice. That makes no sense to me. They had literally, like, a little under 200,000 over here, and they're still losing. Omsk is not weak at all. But we do have 44 divisions of 40 combo with infantry, so I'm not too worried about it. After that, uh, let's do probably a foundation for research. That'd be nice. And they'll come back over here, because these are really quick, actually. Uh, naval bases, trade, maybe. Road through the waste. I like that a lot. Siberian trains. I like that, too. The workers' example. Acceptable minimum wage. Not bad. I like that, too. 
We're going to the west. Cool. And more manpower. What's not to love? Open new doors. <clears throat> now that we have acquired access to the Pacific Ocean, we have acquired a number of new opportunities, both for trade and diplomacy. To the east lies the shining cities of the great, amazing, wonderful United States, both full of riches and hatred for the Reich and the sphere both. To the south lies the industrial states of Asia, many of which are still staunchly opposed to the sphere and are desperate for allies to protect them from the schemes of the greater powers both. Of these serve as a great chance for us to secure our position through the ties to the rest of the world and defend against the predations of the Sphere and the Reich. What's not to love? The Reich and the Sphere. Let's credit. Anything else here? No, not yet. We're getting close here, though. Oh, uh, so we have max relations with these guys, and we need to get to 100 influence, which is easy to do. And we'll have it in just a moment. And take a sip of water. 98 influence. And Ossetia. Blinking in surprise, Issa Piav could hardly believe what his eyes showed him. Of all the people who expected to run up to him out of breath, Leonard Brezhnev certainly wasn't one of them. Is everything alright, comrade? he asked the other man, worry showing on his face. Is someone hurt? Piav, Brezhnev exclaimed, not answering the questions, why didn't you tell me you were from the Caucasus? This served only to confuse Piav further. Well, you never asked. I am from Ossetia. To be precise, why the sudden interest? Brezhnev averted his eyes, seeming almost ashamed it was, Pleyev thought, very unlike him. I served in the Caucasus, during the war, the failures of the front, the fall of the Caucasus, of Ossetia. To the German boot was at least in part my fault, you have my sincerest apologies. I see, Pleyev murmured. Memories of the last time he'd seen his homeland and his people and coming flooding back. He was not sad, though, or even angry then. If you really want apologies, when we fight the Germans once more. Make sure you win, that's all I ask. He offered his hand to Brezhnev with a smile. Wait, really? Brezhnev was undeniably surprised, not having expected forgiveness. After staring for a moment at the outstretched hand, he took it and shook it with a small smile. I see. Then you'll have my word. I'll give my all to throwing out the Germans the next time our forces face them, and deliver not only Moscow, but all the Caucasus. With a wide grin, Pleyev patted Brezhnev on the back. Let's go celebrate with a drink, comrade. And to the sphere they join us. A foundation full of research. And open new doors, my friends. Always open new doors. Get learning. Roads through the waste. The Far East is a very disconnected place, difficult for the central government to properly manage, with the roads ruined by disrepair and the infrastructure destroyed by conflict. Now that we control the region, it is our responsibility to repair the damage and restore everything to working order. And in addition to that, we will build new highways to connect their major cities and encourage internal trade, thereby enriching the people and securing our control of the land. With these aims accomplished, we might create a Siberia that thrives even more than before the war. Ah, oh, that'd be great. That would be really great. Would it not be great? It would be great. We have 8,000 manpower, huh? That's not as much as I hope we would have had, but whatever. Because I want fighters. And I want casts. Go on train. There you go, guys. And not bad. Not too shabby. Open new doors. Oh, we do that one too. Oh, let's do this one first. Address the Indian problem. What well, with the Soviet Navy? We have now has have sea access, giving us a necessary advantage. We must start developing a navy. Worth, uh, worthy of old Russia, a new Pacific fleet that will rule the waves. New ship designs will need to be adopted and dockyards constructed to create a fully functioning Red Navy just as the Soviet Union had decades before. That's so weird. I was almost certain that these guys would have won. The WRF, but Tukhachevsky just failed so hard. Ah, Yazov. That's a lot of manpower back they have. We definitely have more divisions than them, so I'm not really too worried about it. And they're light infantry. Most of are lead infantry, but still. So we've already added them to our sphere, so... Oh, we can integrate them? There you go. They might say yes, they might say no. Let's hope they say yes. How are we doing here? Uh, we don't really do that stuff. There you go. I'm sure these guys have a lot of things we got to get done, so... Cool, and the Soviet Navy. Are we done training here? We have 44 divisions, which is just quite good. Just really good. Oh, wait, we have another... Oh, we have two, chop two choppers. Okay. Armor, kind of not cool. If you like your butt improved academic base, please go right ahead. Uh, let's do that one. Something to be celebrated. Night vision, nice. And grab some of that, too. More soft attack, thank you. And we'll do roads to the waste to get some more infrastructure. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is yes, rebuilding the Pacific Fleet. It's been many, many years since members of our government have been giving anything but a passing thought to the matter of naval operations. However, with increasing consolidation of control over the Far East Pacific ports, this must change, of course. The oceans offer far too much promise. <clears throat> 
far too many opportunities for trade and far too many potential avenues for attack upon our lands to ignore any longer. As such, it has been declared that the command structure for the Soviet Pacific Fleet must be reactivated in order to control all operations within the Pacific littoral at any time, hopefully far beyond. While this does establish the necessary naval command and infrastructure, our fleet of course needs a ships. And so, in addition to this proclamation, a program of focus and rapid ship design has additionally been announced. It will likely take time for the designs to be finalized when they are when they are, we will be able to quickly construct ships optimized for our specific needs. It may take years to reach anything approaching operational consideration by the powers of the world, but we will remain committed, and in time, those same powers will learn to fear Soviet naval might. Nice. Once again, we'll take to the seas and Kazakhstan uh, accept integration. Our diplomats have returned from Alma Akta with wonderful news. After significant deliberation, the government of Kazakhstan has accepted our offer to absorb their territory into our state peacefully. The current government will continue to administer the region as an interim provisional authority until we're able to fully integrate the region. The army of Kazakhstan and their other branches of the military have agreed to integrate into our military as well, providing us with thousands of soldiers familiar with local terrain and ready to serve their new nation. Many fear that Kazakhstan would be the spark that set Russia alight once more, but it seems that diplomacy has prevailed this time at least. Perhaps we can hope that the days of war across the steppes, or steppes, are coming to an end. Yeah, steps. We get almost no political power for the old union. Jesus. And we can't even core other stuff. Wait, we have black market arms trading. Luxury trading, okay. For the old union? Is this a... Something... Is this ours? Huh, that's really... That's really harsh for us. Oh, the... Oh, the relationship here. Oh, okay. Everything's been thrown out of whack. Oh, not this one. It's this one. Okay. That makes a lot more sense then. Citizen. No wonder we're not making any military. Uh, no money. Citizen, and then military. Military, and then citizen. We'll go back to citizen, and we'll go back to the military. How's that looking now? That's looking a little better. A little bit more for the army, and a few more for the Ar military. Military. Civilians. That should be much better now. Okay, that's actually a little better. Not actually that much better, so. Um, I don't want to spend that much more money, honestly, so... Goodbye. We'll be fine, probably. Minus five? Jesus Christ. This thing, this thing is bugged. I swear to God, this thing is completely bugged. 90% minus 12 each month? What the heck? Why? Yeah, this thing is bugged. But if you like to read about this, please go right ahead. Excellent. That's got to be bugged, man. Um, let's go and do this one. And port modernization program. Although impressive ports once traveled to by ships from around the world line the coast of Amur and Magadan, they've lost most of their past glory. This is largely due to their outdated technology and equipment and dire need of repair, which has discouraged overseas trade. By modernizing the ports to have the latest and finest equipment and technology we can afford, as well as improving upon their original design, we can once again encourage trade to come in from Shanghai to San Francisco, bringing prosperity to the peoples of the far eastern ports. Nice. Yeah, this makes literally no sense here. Well, I guess we need a little more army, but still, like... You can have that. You have that. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. So now it's, it's why is it still going? I don't understand that at all, man. I just that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, let's do cheetah next because we still want to core everything we have. So, uh, Siberian trains. The Trans-Siberian Railway is a vital artery of our state, and yet over the past few decades it has fallen into a state of dangerous disrepair which threatens our very ability to manage the territory we control. We must set about repairing it without delay to prevent this threat, and keep the flow of trade going within our state. It would also be wise to have to repair the railway, modernize it has become relatively limited in its capabilities when compared to our other large railways due to the outdated technology, its uses, or it uses, and make it even more efficient than it was before the Union collapsed. At least that's looking better now, but... Oh, weaponry? Yes, please. All right, let's get some of that, too. Awesome. Uh, the Pacific Route. The time has come to finally put the newly acquired Pacific ports to good use. Through tr though trading has ex existed in Asia and with the, with the Americas throughout the Pacific Coast, it was severely impacted by the war and the resulting collapse of the Union, and then further limited by the Siberian War. Restoring these past trade links could only be to our benefit, and could help us achieve closer relations with the U.S. and un unaligned Asian countries. We should therefore immediately dispatch diplomats to meet with these governments and reach agreements with them to encourage Pacific trade to reach our ports, which is good. And let's go and do a lot of this side over here actually first, just because we want a defense on core territory with the more war support, so that'll be good. Trans-Siberian Railway. Efforts to improve the Trans-Siberian Railway are underway, and so far they're improving, proving fruitful. Sections are being secured and modernized, and we have ensured the railway is a safe line for transport and travel once more. 
No longer will loose bandits be able to wreak havoc on our supply lines, and decades old parts of rail are being replaced and repaired soon. Even more trains will be able to travel the cracks and tracks, improving our supply and industrial capabilities. People are happy the country's infrastructure is finally being improved upon, and maybe the regular Russian proletariat be so will soon see the new ways of travel. Siberian industry will flourish and move our troops. We have now secured the Far East, and with this in mind, we have forces to spare and must focus upon our greatest threat. That threat is not the fascist empire of the sphere, the, nor the partisans that still occasionally attack the vast tundra of Siberia. Those enemies are the true successors of the Soviet Union who will be dealt with in due time, but currently we must look westward. The Western Siberia, or Western Russia actually, has likewise been united under Russian warlord Dmitry Yazov, and while they have lots of manpower, they have been scarred by the terror bombings of the Huns. We can't let down our guard, regardless of how much damage those bombers did. We must move the vast majority of our forces to our western border and prepare for a bloody unification. Even if our western counterpart intends for a peaceful resolution, not to, to, the, to this dark age, we must not show weakness, not when peace is so close at hand. Begin to improve? Nice. And I'm glad I waited a little bit longer just for this one, just because even though we get better army professionalism, we do get more attack and defense and core territory, which is very nice. Which is why I'm doing this area first. Plavadar? Yes, please. Good, good, good. And then reallocate our forts? Yes, please. We'll dismantle bunkers and inland and prepare new fortifications in the border of West Russia. Nice. Our nation is covered in defensive lines, fortifications, and bunkers. These fortifications were meant to be used against foes that no longer exist. It's a complete waste, and these resources would be far more effective elsewhere. My apologies for something. Go switch this around. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My apologies. Arrgh. It is 1970, thank you very much. Oh, why does technology have to take so long for this? Boom, 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 boom. Let's go. Cool. The only border that needs defending is our western border. The fate of Russia will rest upon what happens at that border, and we can't afford to leave that border undefended in such crucial times. As such, we're ordering the immediate dismantlement of these archaic uses fortifications. Following this dismantlement, we're also ordering the immediate construction of fortifications along the west Russian border. If the unifier of western Russia attempts to strike against us, they shall find their offensive shattered by the impenetrable defenses. At least he hopes they be impenetrable, but at, along the frontier. As the borders of the state continue to expand to and from of, from the Mongolian hinterlands to the far more westerly lands, it was inevitable that such encounters would occur. The members of the military patrol were cosmopolitan. Their sergeant followed the military campaigns all the way from Siberia, while many of the men were from towns and villages in the more recent territorial integrations. The sergeant gave thanks for this as it allowed him to both espouse his own experiences and while also benefiting from the local knowledge of the recruits possessed. Knowing that well served when one of the recruits noticed another patrol, in the distance observing them from a small hillcock just from the frontier. Or hillock. The sergeant at first tightened his grip on the weapon he carried and brought the binoculars to his face. He relaxed when he saw they were likely on the same mission as he. Their states had met some time previously, and it was not yet certain what their subsequent interaction would be. Conflict or diplomacy? Nobody knew except for those at the very top, and we kind of know it's going to be war. And they were not telling anyone their thoughts. To the men on the front lines, however, many considerations were very different. They were just soldiers walking many miles in desolate terrain, all in the name of security. Slowly, one of the men on the other patrol raised his arm and waved. The sergeant, after a long moment, waved back. He might, in the future, be shooting at that man. Probably will be. But, at least for today, they were just two common soldiers doing their mundane, if necessary, job. Comrades, no doubt, at least another place and time. We need even more for the army here. God dang it. The army is so demanding, man. I think we've already given up every single tile here possible. Oh, maybe except for this one. Right, give it to the military. If if we find another one, we'll give it. Oh, that's up there. So this one, here we go. Hundred percent, hundred four percent. That should be good, right? That should be okay for now. So now we get point eight seven a day. Not terrible, but not great. Looking to the west. Unification is close at hand. Only two contenders remain, and the next few months will decide the fate of all of Russia. Our men have fought for a long time, and they may be tired, but we must prepare for one more battle. Nobody wants us to end in bloodshed, and our diplomats are trying their hardest to achieve a peaceful resolution. However, we can't guarantee our western neighbors' intentions, and both of our militaries have been mobilized against each other. If either of our two nations attempts a surprise offensive, the other will be prepared. Let us hope that Russia will be reunited by pen and paper rather than blood and steel. But that would be really cool for blood and steel. Really cool. And we'll do this one next. Yes, please. Actually, that's a big old towel. And then the worker's example. <clears throat> the driving forces of our cause, the foundation of all communist ideals, is the example set by the common worker and the strong belief in the righteousness of it. All people must work according to their ability to provide for each according to their needs. This ideal is what motivates us to labor, to fight, to survive, in hopes of one day reaching a better, more equal world than the one we currently live in. Our state will continue to be a champion of this ideal on behalf of workers around the world and those, of course, at home. And we get less max factories, which sucks, more stability, less cap, more monthly property change, and industrial expertise. Not bad.
Ah, oh, my apologies. Oof. And we can still do this stuff, but we don't have enough PP for this yet. We still gotta core all this out of the territory. Alright, so I, I don't wanna look at this anymore. Hopefully it stays okay. It's only minus 1.5 every month and 0.5, so it's, it's very weird, but once it hits 1971, we're gonna try to do. Well, I guess we can't peacefully reunify with success, but whatever. Um, let's go and do this one first. Source the four materials first, and then we can read the other one. Lose some stability, lose some political power, which sucks, but whatever. And we should have it very soon, very, very soon. Cool. And Toby, yes, please. A renewed union. At long last, we are ready. The roads and cities have been thoroughly repaired and employment found for the impoverished. Diplomatic relations have been opened up around the world with a wide variety of governments. Our ports, railways, and highways have been rebuilt and greatly modernized to better connect even the remote remotest areas of our territory. And innovation in scientific fields is proceeding even more quickly than before. Not only that, we have moved our soldiers and fortresses to our western border. To protect ourselves against any incursions, we are ready to reunite Russia, regain what has been lost, and return home. The most important thing is to return home, so... We'll be done with that. We could get some radar, but I'm thinking we don't really need to do that too much. Let's grab some of this. Thank you. And there goes part of Iraq. Goodbye, Iraq. Have a good time. Well, I guess you're not really having a good time, but whatever. Have a good time regardless. We wish you well. Somewhat. Not really, but whatever. Go do all this stuff. Loads of civvies. I also built up the uh, infrastructure here, too, because we're going to need more infrastructure, probably. Transjordan is gone. Goodbye, Transjordan. That was a comment for me to play as, like, the El Governator. Governat? Um, in the Middle East. So maybe we'll try. I don't know how long the continent is, but we'll try it eventually. I promise you that. I'll try to get through at least every nation in TNO sometime, including South Africa, which is definitely a nation. Naval designs comp completed. That was fast. Wow. Okay. The first designs to the ships, as ordered pr produced by the High Command upon the insta instantiation of the Soviet Pacific Fleet, has seen has been received in record time. Incorporating both modernized elements as well as customized for particular operating environments of the Far East littoral and regional waters, the designs promise to provide the Pacific Fleet with the ability, ability to be effectively, effective at the very least, act to secure its waters. Furthermore, using these initial designs as inspiration and experience, those so assigned pledge to continue the program to deliver plans for ever more capable ships. With the command structure established and the design plans drafted and finalized, the only thing that remains is to finally put the plan into action and commence the construction of the physical ships for a later commissioning. Dockyard facilities in the east have been contacted and informed of the state's plans, and they have reported that they are ready and waiting to begin the process. We only need to give the word. While we believe the time to be right and the resources to be available, we can begin shipbuilding at any moment desired. When should we begin? Probably now. Cool. And a renewed union, and then we'll chase the sun. Nice. Wow, we have no PP now. No PP. Not feeling good. With no PP. Wow, 7.8% and still 22. That is... That's extreme. That is extremely extreme. Wow. We still have a little bit of cast, which is nice, though. Cool. If you need to do that, thank you. You guys looking okay? Actually, no. You guys need to train. Duplicate and train. Everyone train. Including you. Oh, I guess you don't have enough of that, huh? Cool. Preparing for the final unification. With the Far East now under our control, we are now have almost unified almost all of Siberia. We grow more prepared for the final unification by the day, and if it comes down to the pen or sword, we will be ready. The proletariat will defend no matter what the cost, and the Red Army will, re will return home. Where we were once a small state in Mongolia, racked by defeat and depression, we have now achieved our true destiny. Integration of the Far East is still being handled, of course, but a rule seems to be secured with the populace. We must now be sure to expand our industrial capabilities and ensure our entire military is well armed. We cannot go without equipment no matter what happens. We are prepared to face the West, which is kind of disappointing. Like, all these end focuses, they don't seem like very flavorful for our specific nation, which is, you know, it happens from time to time, but still. I would like to see a little bit more flavor for us. A little, a little more yum yum flavor. Nah, that's not looking terrible. But hopefully we'll go to war soon. It is October uh, 13th, so. Once we finish this focus, then we'll be able to core up more of this stuff here, and then do some more of this stuff, and basically be time to go to war, so. How strong has Omps become? Almost no manpower, but they have, uh, eh, we have more division, so it shouldn't be too bad. Especially on such a massive border that we have. And we're still making more planes. We have a, a lot of manpower as well, so... Really not too bad at all. Are you guys looking good? Nice. There you go. They're good to go. And you guys are still training? Fine, fine, fine with us. There you go. Keep spending some more money. Very weird that we weren't able to... Uh, I don't know, weird, but uh, we're not done even coring all this stuff just yet. It kind of sucks. 
But we don't have to go to Kazakhstan, which is really nice too. One, two, three, four, five, six, some. And about a month and a half left before we can actually go to war, which is fine with me. And I'll go and do that, why not? Let this keep going for now. That's fine with us. So we'll be able to do this stuff. Overall, not too bad. Um, my thoughts regarding the PRC. I, this campaign, I'll be honest, this is not a really long campaign. Most warlords are on four to five videos long, but it's been a struggle. <laughs> it's been a definite struggle, this campaign. Uh, I definitely, like I said in earlier episodes, like I really wouldn't recommend this campaign to anyone new. I mean, if you want to challenge, definitely play as a PRC. Uh, but, I don't know. This this was, this was one was a lot trickier than I thought it would be. I mean, yeah, we started Mongolia, which doesn't have that much manpower and industry, but still. I don't know. I just probably wouldn't recommend it early on. Maybe once, you know, if you're if you're experienced at Hoi 4, then probably you'll, you'll, you'll be fine, but... It's been a definitely campaign. One that I wouldn't not call my... F the one I enjoyed the most. But it, it's not bad. It's not bad. Not great, but not bad. Does anyone else have upgrades? Oh, yes, you, Alexander. No, not really. God dang it. Destruction speed, that's not bad. But let's core more stuff. Let's keep coring, coring, coring. Actually, how's the society doing? So, primary schooling is not going to go up. Uh, research facilities, probably not. Agriculture, probably not. We already maxed it out. Poverty is looking good, though. Not too bad. Could, could be better, though. Industrial equipment, maybe. Probably not, but maybe. Experience is coming along. Professional army is very nice. So, not too bad. Now, we're about ready to go to war. Or do the unification stuff. But, you know what? I can go ahead and do all stuff probably off screen, so I'll see you in just a little bit. And here we are, everyone. I've actually went to war with these guys just because I got tired of waiting for them, but... So basically, this is where we're left off anyways. We have 46 divisions. We have quite a bit more industry than them, and they're roughly about the same size as us, and you can see they just literally started attacking us. Wow. Our guys were immediately beaten back. All right, well, let's try to attack them too. All right, let's see what happens. Hopefully, we'll do okay. We should do okay. I'm not too worried about this, but you know what? That might turn uh, different very soon, but you never know. And actually, before we go too far, how much manpower do they have? They have 49 to... Okay. Half a million almost versus 50,000. Not bad. And also, I'm doing government authority. We're losing a lot of political power, but it doesn't really matter at this point since we're not doing a focus. And we got 10% more stability from that, even though our stability is not really, 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 really done. Oh, we just overran some divisions. Oh, we ran over some more divisions. Nice. Actually, how are the choppers doing? Where, is the chop where are the choppers at? They're just doing nothing. Okay. Um. Okay, then. Well, then. How fast can you move? Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's really nice. I mean, at this point, like, if you're a, a, a developed industrial nation... It's not too bad using choppers. But if you're starting off and your choppers aren't very good, there's almost no point to have them. We've lost almost 100,000. We've killed off 400,000 enemies, though. Yazov was a mistake in TNO. At least he was. Like, our timeline, maybe not so much. But, like, like this Yazov here, hmm, he's killing off. He wanted war, man. Actually, we would have fought anyways, but... Okay, they just overran him. Guys, don't worry about that. Oh, it's lagging. Oh, it's auto-saving. Duh. Just gotta read the screen sometimes, Mr. Mocha Lover. Cool, and they're going to be encircled, and they're dead. Beautiful. So, I know I could be doing this a lot more effectively, but at this point, they have 11 less divisions max. We might have actually about double their divisions, and we've lost 100,000 manpower while we've lost 150-ish. So, uh, where are these guys going to go next? Just do something like that. Yeah, just keep going, go, go, go. I guess we can just get over there. Like, we just encircle all these guys down here, so. Not too bad. Take some time to get over the rivers, which still makes some sense. Oh, they just died anyways. Okay. Well. Not bad. I mean, how many more Russians do you want to kill off, Yazov? I, and as you can see, I'm really pumping a lot of divisions in here. Or a lot of factors into here. You could just probably just go to here, and then up to there, and go to Angos. Why did they make... Wait, why did Omsk make... I guess it made the capital... Om like arc hangles because we already took them out so all right not bad they have up to 17 divisions two-thirds of a million have died about a million died in this war which is actually kind of insane to think about uh if you guys would both like to come here there you go yeah at this point using uh planes or choppers i should say not bad really not bad at all but earlier it's just like i said just not very good to use just Nice, but artillery is pretty good. Pretty darn good. Research at this point doesn't matter since we're pretty much done with the campaign. But we'll keep expanding our guys here. 
a little bit more. Thank you doing that. Yes, yeah, defensive breakthrough. Thank you. Uh, guys, go in if you can. That'd be good. Yep, there you go. And there goes Syria. They have up to 14 divisions left with almost 700,000 losses. Pretty darn good, I'd say. Pretty darn good. Chapas, where are you at? Head on up here, through here to there. Cool. There you go. Get another chopper division. It'll be on the line very, very soon. That's all that matters to me. Chapa, chapa, chapa. And you cut him off. Beautiful. And 70,000 losses, not bad. Oh well, it is what it is. Yay! Even more choppers. At this point, we can really get a lot of choppers. It may be really cool. If I were like to continue this campaign, just make use nothing but actual just helicopters against Germany. We would lose fuel so fast and so many choppers, but that'd be really cool. At least in my mind it would be. Uh, there's only one division here. He's probably starving for supplies anyways. There you go. Kill him. Goodbye. Oh, you probably still need some more orders. There you go. Alright, Angolsk. Uh, give them a few more days. They have nine divisions. They have uh, literally a million Russians that will have died by the time this war is over, so. It is what it is. Now, what you can really do about it. Guys, would you like to come up here? And we don't have, And now we've got AKMs, or N's. N's or M's, something like that. There you go. Good luck. Not bad. God, choppers are so nice. Oh, we just literally just took. Oh, and I get next. Where's the capital? Ukta. Very nice, very nice. Uh, they're, they're not dead yet. Dmitry Yazov will not give up without killing off as much of Russia as he possibly can. 1.1 million Russians have died in this war. Roughly. That's so sad. Especially when you're getting ready to go to war with Germany. Under, was it B Borman, maybe? Maybe. Ah, beautiful, my, my friends. Beautiful. No, it looks like Baldman. Yeah, Baldman here. That sucks. Um, hey, we're gonna do this. Use the baller PP. 35 days is still quite a long time. And we have done it, my friends. Oh, we can't do government authority. We're done with that stuff. We're done with that stuff. And regional integration. Defense development stage. Thank you. Um, reunification of Russia. Reunify the motherland. Here we go, my friends. Another research slot. Beautiful. As of today, the state once known as the People's All Revolutionary Council has reunified the lands of Russia under their control, assuming the identity of the USSR. Originally coming from the Red Army units under the command of Alexander Vasilevsky, they were they were forced into exile on the steppe of Tuva, Mongolia. They successfully returned to Russia after much fighting, emerging victorious over all who opposed them. Though they are still undeniably socialists, having maintained the ideology despite its, the hardships they went through, some socialist leaders from around the world are hesitant to embrace them, given pause by the strange military government and unusually democratic officer elections which we got rid of already. Even so, few can deny that Russia is securely in the grip, but they now stand at the gates of the Reich, ready to display this, the might of a new and improved union. Long live the people's revolution, my friends. Cool. For the Union. And that is the end of this campaign, my friends. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, like I said earlier, it wasn't bad. It wasn't probably my most a campaign that I enjoyed the most, but it was still fun, somewhat, regardless. If you enjoyed it, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.